but we probably want to wait four to five years. Now, of course, the Lord has a habit of changing plans, and we are pregnant. Life is always Welcome in folks. So we're glad you clicked on this Q&A. We're going to be answering some questions that we haven't necessarily answered before and some new things that you guys have asked us in our community tab on YouTube. Kelly, I think it's Puentes, P-U-E-N-T-E-S. It's either Hispanic or... We're pronouncing it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> One of the two. I'm not sure. But she asked, what have been some of your favorite products of the month? Dutch oven is probably one of them. <laughs> Crying laughing emoji. Dutch oven is solid one. So Nick's favorite item is obviously the Dutch oven and probably some other things. For, for now. Besides like material items, I've been spending a lot of time on my phone, which I've been kind of embarrassed about just because We've been spending a lot of extra time at home. A lot of us aren't allowed to even leave our house with the virus and everything. And so I've been honestly trying to find ways to read. So I came across an app a while ago that I have on my phone currently, and I've loved it so far. It's called Pray.com, and they're actually working with us on this video. We're in partnership with them, and we just thought it was super seamless to work with them because we've already loved all the things that they've created. Mm -hmm. So basically on this app, they have different ways to listen to scripture stories, uh, whether it's the story of Noah, the story of Abraham. I'm just going through like all of the different stories they have on here, and the guy's voice is so soothing, and it just makes you want to keep on listening. <laughs> There's different sections on here as well, like a community tab where you can, I can pray for Nick if he posts something on here. You can also pray for my homies in Guatemala. That's or, my favorite part, to be quite honest. Yeah. I love, I love the whole app. I love the stories, but like for those of us who have read through the Bible now multiple times, we know what the stories are, but man, that community prayer tab is unlike anything else I've ever seen on any other app anywhere. It's so unique to this and that's just my favorite thing in the entire yeah. app. And so um, it's been a blessing to us, been a blessing to me, and it's been so encouraging to see so many people around the world praying for one another Especially during, during this, this time. time. There's also a music section, and even when the guy reads, there's like music behind him talking. So it really engages you. Basically, y'all can download it for free. There's a free trial that you guys can take advantage of. So to download the Pray.com app, all you have to do is scan this flow code that is on the front of the screen. Open the camera on your phone, aim the camera at the flow code, and then tap the banner that appears to download the Pray app. Super unique, super great. I'm really glad that we got to partner with them for this video. So on to some more questions. Do you want to read any? Yes, I would like to read some questions. All right. We try to go through the community tab and look at some of the most popular ones on here. The ones with the most thumbs up so that you guys got demanding questions out. Yes. Oh, wow. These are, whoa. What? Whoa, Nelly. These are. Are they deep? No, 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 pretty deep. I mean, I can go <laughs> into. Okay, let's just start. Uh, okay. Question number one. Uh, this one's pretty deep. So, in a relationship, <laughs> when is the right time to open up about deep personal things, such as past trauma, mistakes, or struggles? Hmm. Yeah. That's hard because I feel like it's not a specific time for every relationship. I feel like everybody is different. Every relationship flows differently. I know that we opened up very quickly about yeah. stuff like that. Just because we knew from the start, this is another question I remember someone had, how do you know when someone's the one? Everybody describes that it's a feeling and you just know, but sure. what are some indicators that it's like that you're in the right relationship? And I would say when you know that for sure, like for us, since we knew, we felt comfortable and like it was the time to maneuver in that direction of showing each other like this is the real me, this is what I've been through sort of thing. I mean if it was me and I was just really thinking on hey when is like a, if I were to just set a general marker 
I would probably say sometime around six months in a dating relationship because I think that's going to give you enough time to be into it to show mutual commitment, mm -hmm. uh, but not enough time to get you in trouble from keeping something from someone or not opening up about something to someone. And uh, it's also not too soon. So I think around that six month range is what I would say if I, if I had to maybe put a gauge on it between you and I and our yeah. relationship. Okay, let's keep this one short and sweet. This okay. is the number one thumbs up comment on our community tab. Bring it. Ambie asks, what are your thoughts on other denominations of Christianity? Ambie, I'm so glad you asked. I think they all suck. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, you just rambled for like, no, you didn't ramble, but you just, Talk you just answered that question. So I want to answer this one. Okay. My thoughts. Let's just like all pick up our tea and spill it. I'm joking. This is coffee because we're Christians. My <laughs> thoughts on other denominations is that I respect them. I am thankful for all of them. Uh, however, at different points in history, and I'm seeing this more and more, is that they're really, they can be, I'm not saying they are, but they can be like a mental tool that divides people. And I know that may sound like yeah. weird, but I personally rarely ever see a Baptist going to a Catholic church or a Catholic going to a Presbyterian church, or like I Pentecostal never, kind of. exactly, like I never see really diversity, like all joined together as one, embracing some of our differences, embracing some of our quirks and things like that. And so the more I've traveled and spoken at different places, the more I've seen that we are all so, so much more alike than we are different. And I am so grateful for that because I think that shows the character and the nature of God yep. even more uh, than if we were all just a bit different. Yeah, this whole ladder of like superiority thing, like this one's better than this one or this one's theology is better or whatever, I think is just nonsense in a lot of ways. I think we're all children of God and I would really, really love if we could act more like that. So that would be my answer. I know that there's a lot of differences in between different denominations mm -hmm. too, and that really stumps people up. And I was just talking to a girl that was saying that she has felt lack of community in her like Catholic church. And not that she doesn't believe in what her church is teaching, but she really wished that she had the community that a lot of other Christian denominations have. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's where we can go wrong is thinking that we have to like settle or stay in one place and not be like the united body of Christ. Yeah. And so I think when we lean into our differences, we actually get into conversations where we learn more, we understand each other better, and we're willing to listen to one another. And I think that that is what the Lord wants is we want to like be like the representation of who he is by leaning into all these things rather than retracting ourselves and being divided. So I love what you said there. And yeah. I think that that was a really good question. So thank solid. you, Amy, for asking that. Appreciate that. I want to answer this one. It's from Ray and Grace. She asks, what is your least favorite thing about being young, married, and living together? Love you guys. <laughs> well, Miss Rays of Grace. Mm -hmm. Yes, Rays, Rays of it. Oh, man. Chelsea's just not Don't going back know. on that. Um, no, man, least favorite. That's just not something I think about yeah. very often. And we intentionally didn't review these questions before the video, right. so we wanted this to be organic and, and really our response. I think, I don't want to, I want to restructure this question because I'm gonna change your question. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't really like the least favorite thing. I think better would be what has been the most challenging, yeah, maybe. Sure. So I think since we're both so different in personality, that us being together all the time, doing a lot of work together, he's doing school online, I'm trying to you know do all these random things like mm -hmm. 
what has been the most challenging thing is our personalities, like learning how to go throughout different stages of the day and different times, like especially times where we're constantly home together, mm -hmm. how to not clash when it comes to personality. Right. Like, I think that's good. It's great that it's happening because it's teaching us how to work on conflict, our differences, our similarities, and what we can like over time mm -hmm. mold and shape. So Emily asked us, what about doing things as individuals? Um, what about having separate lives in your marriage? I think she's not asking like how we live totally different lives, but what we do individually to grow as people and maybe things we enjoy. Nick and I both have very different passions and things we enjoy. So, bit. and that's great because we both get to lean into those things together and figure each other out even mm -hmm. more. And then make us who we are. Mm -hmm. so. so Nick's is like very classic guy things. Like I'm pretty boyish. <laughs> uh, I love coffee. I love hunting. I love fishing. I love Jesus. I love being outdoors, hiking. I love driving, like going, just driving different places to clear my head and all that fun stuff. So pretty standard, typical dude stuff, but yeah, that's who I am. That's and it's I good to let let your your person you're with do all those things because if they don't have that individuality, then they'll probably go a little crazy. And for me, right now it's kind of hard to do that because we have to stay inside quite a lot, but. I have loved going to different fitness classes with my neighbor and we love trying out different different classes and it's just fun to do that with just girls. And I love hanging out with probably about one friend every week or two weeks or whatever. It just depends on like how often we're traveling. But I love just having that girl time and doing things like that. I'm not a huge like high maintenance person. Like I, I don't, I honestly rarely ever get my nails done. I It takes me a long time to come yeah. around to get a haircut. Like that doesn't make you high maintenance, but I just don't really even think to do those things that most girls like carve out even budget for those types of things. So I was really excited and glad I got my hair cut. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was time. It was for sure. Yeah, time. I think it's good. <sighs> Sorry, I had to yawn. Oh, this is important. I forgot one thing that I love, and that is dogs. We both love dogs. We well, love dogs. Obviously, we have... Golden Retrievers, RIP Wally. Love Black Labs, German Shepherds. Huskies. And Huskies, or as we call them around the Hurst Huskies. household. Huskies. Okay. Hey, it's... Soul Sister. I can't say her name, but it's a beautiful name. From Pakistan. My question is, how do you guys stay positive when there's so much negativity everywhere? I could give like cliche answers, like we have the hope of the Lord, but I don't know. It's really... not cliche, I mean it's true. Yeah, but... I mean it's 100% true, like we have but the hope of Jesus. How do you practically do yeah. that? Yeah, uh, man, I think knowing a few things. I think knowing that really everything like this stuff that's going on right now, whether it be uh, this virus that's going rampant or war or whatever I think to know that all of this is temporary like all of this will at some point be a mark like a marked thing from the past and that it will end and that good times will return I think knowing that is assuring I think it's comforting and it's not really being blind in any sort of way like you know hoping that something is going to happen that really won't but I think having eyes for the future to see what's to come and the hope that is to come uh, yes here on earth but also in heaven is I think that's what keeps me going I think that's good but one thing I've also been I think like, that's good but this is what's right <laughs> no one thing that I always don't want to miss though is what God is trying to do right now I know that not only is this a virus but this is also something that the Lord has known is going to happen and and so I try to not act like he's surprised by things and I know that he's doing something in the midst of this stuff I mean if you read 2nd Chronicles 7 certain things like this have happened in the past in Africa there's been a lot of locusts eating different 
like pieces of the land and chewing up crops and all of that sort of stuff and then we had all of the australian wildfires and earthquake and the Utah, earthquakes yeah. and um this currently happening with the virus and the sickness and so the lord says when you turn from your wicked ways and you repent and humble yourself, come, humble yourself he will heal your land and he will forgive your sins and I think that what the Lord is doing through all of this is drawing his people to him and those who are lost to him. And I don't think that we should lose that side of things. I know that there's a lot of people who've lost jobs. I know that this has been really hard on a ton of people, but I think that there's also a lot of beauty that's going to come from this. And mm -hmm. I think that he's restoring a lot of things. He's bringing a lot of people closer. And uh, I think that you guys should definitely dig into scripture. And I think mm -hmm. the uh, Pray app that we just mentioned at the beginning of the video will definitely help you in a lot of those ways, but also opening up a physical Bible and just like seeing, okay, what is the Lord done in the past? What is he like saying that he's going to do in the future? How is he changing me on the inside as I seek him? Yeah. So being very reflective during this time yeah. has helped me a lot. And I feel also feel the need to mention this because I'm sure there's going to be at least one of you watching who are curious about this. But if you're one of the people who are asking, how can God be good when there's so much evil in the world? There's so much... Um, so many horrible things happening all over the place. I actually made an inst Instagram post, can't even say it. I made an Instagram post about that. directly about that and I'll link it, I'll put a link to it in the description of this video so you can go and click that and read it if you're curious about that or if you want an answer to that question. Or if we forget, you can just go to official Nick H on Instagram. Yeah, we'll link it, I don't know, somewhere, probably so, right in my face. The Lord promises as we seek him and trust mm -hmm. in him, he's gonna provide for our every need. And sometimes that is accepting help from other people and yeah, um, right. leaning on other people who will give that to you. So Absolutely. this girl asks, has coming off the pill slash birth control affected your relationship with each other in any way? Did you become any less attracted to each other other than when you were still on it, seeing as it alters your hormones? So we did a video about birth control and us doing the more natural approach. And I would say for me, my attraction levels haven't changed. If anything, I feel more attracted to Nick. And I don't think your attraction has changed for me, no, right? Not at all. I think you sometimes are a little worried about- You look. Hot Thank woman, you. hot, H-O-T-T-T. -T -T. So basically, we haven't changed in our hormones as we know like from that. I wasn't on birth control for a very long time. Now we're in a place where we just feel like we're working with the natural flow yeah. of who we are. And, and you've also lost some weight. I think you've lost some weight. Yeah, I had a lot of water retention whenever I was on the pill. That's a pretty common thing that happens when you're on the pill. I was a little bit more like full in my face and like different parts of my body. And sometimes it does depend on the day because I have a little bit more of a full face. Mm. But I think I Full have... of beauty. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right, this the last question. You ready? You've been here a long time. We've been here a long time. My coffee is now cold. Have we thought about having children? Have we thought about it? Yes, yes. We've talked about this a little bit. We want to wait until 25, 26-ish. Oh God. I don't know why I thought you were about to say we want to wait 25 or 26 years. <laughs> yes, we do want to have little babies, but we probably want to wait four to five years. Now, of course, the Lord has a habit of changing plans and we are pregnant. No, we're not. no, we're not. We are not. I promise. But yeah, we just want to wait a minute. We want to move into a home together here soon and have dogs and chill for a few years and just spend some moments together before we sign up for a 20 year ride of investment investment into the next generation. That's our thoughts, but yeah. we hope you guys enjoy these questions. I know there's a lot of them and we'll try to go back to that community tab and answer a few things. But if you have any more questions for us, if you want us to like take dialogue further, 
feel free to leave a comment and check us out on pray.com we're going to be on that app and just kind of reading some different things together sharing prayers all that sort of stuff so you can click the link in the description or go to the beginning of this video and scan the qr code once again all right guys uh, as always thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video leave a like down below also subscribe and turn the bell notification little icon thing on so you never miss a video but until next week Hope you don't get the virus and Nick. be well. Bye. Stay home. <laughs>